matchup. We'll get an in Can we we'll, get a cardboard we'll, interview? We'll, I don't know how the interview will work. <laughs> we are dropping in now, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. And um, just to finish my point, if we if we do speak to someone after this first match, mm-hmm. um, I'd love to get some thoughts on preparation. Well, some some explanation on in terms of how they've prepared for this tournament as a whole, because th- again, that's going to be something that's yeah. so different to normal competitive PUBG. It is. It is, and that's uh, hopefully something we can get for them. But as you said yourself right there, Paul, we are in the uh, in the sky plane. It's taking into a wrangle and we are all an over and what I'm actually a bit surprised to see here is not more people going military now of yeah. course you haven't been you haven't been here while we've been no. having these other games but it's just whenever it happens when you hit that one minute and 30 seconds and the first circle pops if it goes military and one team is like somewhat fully committed down there it's so hard if not close to impossible for the other team to get across because you talk about bridge camps right in, in competitive games when you have four guys doing it if you have 32 guys holding a yeah. bridge how do you get over of course Especially in terms of it being on the map, the <gasps> o- like oh, it's happened. <laughs> it's actually happened. Um, on the map being an island, right? Yeah. And if you have thirty-two people there as opposed to a normal PUBG squad, it's going to be so hard to sort of break the fortress down, right? Look at the Turkish players. They're already. They're just saying, guys, we, we got to get over. We got to take control of this. This is like a free win if we get control of both bridges early on. And they're sending players over early. And that's actually something I wanted to compliment the Turkish players for doing too, because we talked about communication, how important it is, right? Mm. But when you're, I mean, one thing is if you're four guys alive all talking to each other, that's all good fun. One guy can say, do this, and they will do it. When you're 32 alive on a team, if you're split into multiple Discord or TeamSpeak, whatever groups you're in, to get communication from point A, come up with the idea, to actually have everyone execute on it, it can take a long time to actually be done. And Turkey, they just seems like a team, like, as soon as things call, boom, they just do it immediately. This is so cool. I'm, I'm loving watching how this is develop, uh, developing and comparing it to, to what I know about normal competitive PUBG, can you tell me if in how normal competi- competitive PUBG is run at the moment that mm-hmm. teams, do they still have that gentleman's agreement not to hot drop on each other? I don't think it's much of a gentleman's agreement, but I mean, it, it, it's a rare thing to uh, see. We, yeah. We've seen it a little bit lately in the Pro League, sure. But uh, I think it's more of a, is it really going to be worth it for us? I mean, there are so many places loot, and when you play competitively, the loot is up, so it's not like you're going to be in a city like, oh no, there's no weapons here. Yeah. You will get loot pretty much no matter where you go. Because it felt like what we just saw was pretty much complete 50-50 split on the map. Yeah. We saw team... Fit, we, 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 I think it was team... Um, the, the flags and the colors now confuse me because we They're got... up there and well, one, yeah. one of the teams <laughs> went east, one of the teams went west. It was directly yeah. split down the middle. Yeah. And then one player from each team went to the military base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, that, which that, kind of reminds me of the let's not hot drop, let's tr- take it um, me- a, a measured approach to what's going on. I mean, we've seen a lot of different things happen. Sometimes it has been the we go west, you go east kind of thing. But we've also had teams just land pretty much on top of each other real early on. I really want to see that so bad. Could happen, we never know. But as you say, as you can see right there as well, you can tr- not completely but pretty much draw a line down the middle mm. and it's pretty well split up. And also now, I mean, both teams have players either on or around the uh, military island. Not something we've seen before, at least not something I've seen. The two games I've casted that has both had military games has been one team down there and the other team didn't have a chance. So here it actually might become a sort of fair thing for both. Okay. And it is actually interesting seeing already just slight movements. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. The very top players... On, I'm. Th- I think Red is Team Finland, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Red is Team Finland. <laughs> um, the fact that those three players at the top haven't moved too much from their original drop location, yeah. whereas it seems like more movement is happening to the southeast. And in terms of Turkey, everybody is still quite bunched together and moving as a greater yeah. force. I think what's happening here is that every team knows. Okay, we have control of our bridge. Had they not had anyone down there, that would have been more of, oh my god, we need to send somebody down to get control. But now they have some east, some west. It's more of a, you know what, take your time, get looted up, the battle has yet to come. And honestly, I mean, technically, it could still shift back over to the northern side. There's a small chance, but it could happen. So you don't want to overcommit everybody yes. to the military island should it go back up. Absolutely. And in terms then of the equipment that these guys are picking up... Mm. Um, what are the key weapons that they should be looking to loot uh, yeah. in terms of what's going to give them the most advantage in this context, 32 versus 32? I think it's very individual from a player basis. Where If you go over to the Finland you, side of things... Yeah, I mean, just quickly interject. Do you think yeah? that 
some of these players have been given specific roles in terms of oh, yeah, equipment? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, cool. I think if you're, if you're a smart commander, because as you said before, a lot of these players, they play competitive on a daily basis. Of course. So you will know their strengths and weaknesses. If you're, for example, if you're looking over to the Finland side of things, Vasku, a very talented player from Sokhdet Nam, he's a beast with a bolt action. There would be no reason to force him to play with anything else. So give him the sniper, have a couple of uh, sniper guys with him, like the, the, the arrow, like the archer squad in the background to sit and do their thing. And then, uh, and then split things up accordingly. Look, look at Team Finland in uh, coming out of the northeast, just whipping hard in, mm -hmm, in the cars. Mm -hmm. They're starting to make that movement yep. south now. And yeah, we're jumping on board with Andy in the old rust boat, um, chugging out smoke from the back, um, making a move. And it seems now that the movement from the north towards the south is yep. happening on both sides at a relatively even pace. And I actually kind of like to see this because it's just been so one-sided. If you have one team that commits <laughs> to military and it goes down there, it's like, well, game over. Let's just go on to the next one. But this one is going to be interesting because we're taking off so much land mass really, really early on. So already from an early stage, well, they're going to be forced into engagements. Mm. I mean, as the game progresses, will we see the teams trying to keep hold of utility such as cars? Well, they would want to, but as we talk about normally in competitive play, if you have four guys shooting at you, there's a pretty big chance your vehicle gets blown up and you die because there's no knocking people when you when it's in an explosion like that. So if you have 32 people shooting at your car, uh, you, you can get killed pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like then perhaps that isn't the best idea. I do remember that from my time with regular competitive PUBG. That, with blowing yeah, up in vehicles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that having a vehicle in the early and mid-stage can be yeah. very useful, but then as things whittle down, it almost just makes you a bigger target. Mm. Now, one thing that's going to be interesting here is, of course, every team knows that the other team has control of the other bridge. Yeah. So, as you can see right now, Andy is really slowly moving his way forward. And this is also something that's interesting. For the Danish team, Raggy Jaggy, very gifted guy, talented guy, but he was more of the backline guy that was clearly the one calling his troops around, where Andy is one of the guys who said, you know what, I'll go up front, I'll be the Aragon, I'll run into my opponents, right? But, uh, but as you can see, he's trying to take ground, see how much control they can really take it. Because feeding 32 two people on one side. It's going to be tricky. This, yeah, so if we get the map view up again shortly, this is... There, 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 there's an interesting movement in terms of now Turkey have left some players a bit further north and there's this big gap mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's so hard as a general and as Team Finland to know that there's a gap there. Yeah. But will we see teams trying to exploit risk by potentially rotating early for a backside flank? Could be, could be. I mean, we've seen flanks being executed to perfection. We've also seen them... Well... They were tried to be executed and is it did difficult? not work at all. It is, it is. Okay. I mean, because one thing is you got to be able to do it. You also got to time it. I mean, it's a good oh. idea. You, you can say we, we'll send five guys down south and push around, but you got to do the engagement like in proper timing. So if the other team engages you before and your team is still a kilometer out, your entire team could be dead before they even get there, and then there's no point in the flank, right? That's <laughs> this is the stuff that was going through my head um, when I was thinking about the tournament before coming here. Yeah. Um, you see earlier, I, I, I referenced some games that this in, in, invokes memories yeah, of. It. In, ter in terms it. of strategy, I, I would love to see the generals trying some really innovative stuff that you can't mm -hmm, do with mm -hmm. a normal PUBG squad. Yeah. When you've got 32 or technically 31 men at your disposal, um, ch trying to chuck some people in, in an awkward off angle, getting getting round cover, getting round buildings, really trying to like outwit mm. the opponents as opposed to just relying on the gun skill that we know that all these players have. You know, it's going to be interesting, and that's that's also what I've been missing from this. So we've had the chance to talk to the captains. You're like, yeah. how, how do you do this? Like, how does it work? Um, and now we'll Ooh, see. I mean, wow, circles. really centering on the bridge, isn't it? Yeah, and this is another thing that is a big factor in this. Circles benefiting one team over the other. I mean, that's right now, sure, as you can see, all the uh, Finlandian, F Finnish, thank you, Toby, uh, players are making their way up. Uh, and also, there's still room, but should those circles continue to go west? it normally becomes a lot easier for the defending team rather than the team trying to push on in. Yeah, indeed. It it, <laughs> it would be, for <laughs> me... Rain, yeah, myth rain. There. Again, both <laughs> bo both of the generals... Um, yeah, obviously. ...commandeering, commandeering vehicles. I, I, I just feel like there's so much... Um, Option, so many options mm -hmm. for creativity here yeah. in terms of, of both teams. And like, I don't know if anyone remembers playing like Rome Total War back in the day or the Total War franchise. Oh, yeah. Um, and like, you think you're up in a great position, then suddenly a, 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 a flank of like armored horse guys <laughs> come over a hill and stab you in the back. Like, I would love to see the it's PUBG version. And here we go, guys, we're getting to our first engagement. So I'm not entirely sure if shots are. Yeah, yes. shots are being exchanged. Um, we've got. 
two Finland players that I think that spicy doggo um, under fire in his vehicle. And we can see that the high ground in the initial phase has mainly been taken over by a troop of Turkish soldiers. Yeah, it's going to be tricky for these guys. I mean, they're all, again, high ground is important, especially when there's so many people. The more area you can overlook, the better for overview you can get of your opponents too. If those guys that are just going out of frame um, from Turkey in the top right on the other side of the island had snipers, would that be a power position for uh, with, with where Finland are right now? Well, I mean, if you can land a one kilometer shot, sure, but uh, <laughs> us, so us, <laughs> us are that, that, that ain't going to happen. And well, even if it does, the thing is... yeah. I mean, to land it twice because you got to get, you got to get him knocked. Yeah, you also got to finish okay, so him, right? That's, so yeah, I don't know the be distances as well as you. So that's every, too far, every like then. the grid, the grid here, every line that you see on the grid on the minimap is 100 meters. Okay, cool. So it, it will be tricky. It will be a very very long shot. But you can see the flank. The flank is already yes, happening down exactly. south. It and is happening. The thing is, they're in vehicles, and she's in Lipson. There, it seems to me like they have some sort of clue what's going on behind them. Yeah, it looks like Shishin. Is it Lipsim or Lipsy? Yeah, Lipsim. It looks like they are aware of this flank they've probably heard the vehicle or seen it and potentially they have an inkling that there are some other um turkish soldiers following them up and they're, they're getting cornered quite badly here um and we're, we're taking a look now at i think, I think they them they're pushing yeah we're, we're actually them. we're actually going to go in for a pov lips in there trying to take down a bike oh and he's actually been flanked there by kajuti um and he's knocked him down. Yeah, seems like Coyote wanted to go up and get himself into a good high ground position. But again, the fight for the high ground control has gone in the favor of, uh, of Turkey. So sure, again, the circle went west and went over towards them and they get to position themselves before the finish. But I like the fact that the finish actually try and get up and uh, and take some take some high ground here. But it's clearly not really working the way they wanted to right now. Mm. We're on board with Jap1 here, or Jappy. Um... <laughs> currently pantless, which probably isn't the best. Well, that's a strategy. Best, best idea in terms of warfare. The thing is, the thing is, I can tell you that real quickly Dude, as this well. Is just yep. Oof. I can tell you that real quickly too. What you see on your left side is a to like your your squad. You have a squad of eight. You cannot make the actual groups any bigger than that. Yes. So you cannot see anyone that's on like that's not in your squad of eight. Which oh. means that it could be your opponents. So it could be Andy saying, you know oh. what? Nobody wears pants. That means we can always recognize each other. Oh, okay. So that's the strategy. But now, once again, Circle, not pretty, not pretty in the favor of the uh, of the finish, and they lose one more player. I just saw um, one of the Turkish players, Muki, M-U-K-K-E, and yeah, he's okay. currently the final player um, in the most most northern position, slightly behind two Finnish players. Um, I'm not exactly sure how he ended up there. I thought the Finnish players were the last ones to rotate and it's going to be interesting to see how he sort of factors in to the fight. We see, again, the Turkish players have managed to keep a hold of this high ground but mm. the Finnish Legion now trying to challenge for it. We've got Peltzig leading the way. Um, is it is it ideal here to engage with them whilst they're in a the building or do the angles face the top? What you can do is you can try and pin them down and I think that's why you see the Turkish players come around because as you can see on your minimap, the white line is shown a little north of the compound which means it will be out of the circle in just a short while. So if you can get all the way around and contain them inside, well then there's going to be no exit for them, right? You're just like, it's a, like kind of the fox trap kind of thing where you burn off both sides and wait for it to run out. And, uh, I have off. no idea what fox trap you're talking about, but I'm going to say yes. You burn off one side. Okay, they, the foxes have two entrances to the cave, so you burn off, like put fire to one side, forces them out the other, and then you kill them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, is that something That's that you picked up in life, or have you been fox hunting? Or no, I've seen the, uh, oh, okay. the the Disney movie. Yeah, I know it's a thing in the UK in in, in the countryside <laughs> where the fox population can get high or something. Anyway, <laughs> away from fox catching, back to uh, Turkey versus Finland. Finland now do have three players. Down and out. So Turkey, Turkey, does that is that much of an advantage at this point to have a, a roughly ten percent lead? Well, I mean, yes and no. There's still, I mean, everything can still happen. Circle could hard shift back towards the finish, and then that lead might not lead them to a whole lot of places. But that's the funny thing, because even though you say it's 32 against 32, one player, we've seen it happen before as well, can actually make a huge difference. If you get around that side, and if he spots an area being open and say, guys, this is clear. That one call could be the difference for the entire like outcome of the game. So mm. never, never underestimate. We've seen comebacks before. I think the biggest one we've had was a, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, something like something like thirty-two to twenty, and it ended up being pretty tied up in the end. Mm, lips in the snake in the grass right now. Not entirely sure if the Finnish player is approaching him. No, he's behind the rock. 
He's going for a long nade there, misses slightly but Oh, no! Nope. Bounce off the rock and knocks Kajuti, but he's covered by smoke, potentially going to be revived there by Jupsik. Jupsik. Jupsik, yeah. But you can, see how, you can see how many players he allowed for his team to push over with. He got up there, he said, you know what, I'm free, there's no one around me, and now there's not one anymore. Now we have six, seven, eight players in the exact same spot. Now they're starting to deal a lot of damage too. Can you explain to me what uh, Nyquil is doing? Nyquil, Nyquil is... He's chilling. I don't know. He was and probably hoping the circle to go north, which oh, clearly okay. didn't happen. I mean, it could be a little uh, miscommunication there. But, uh, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> and now we get the red zones down here as well. This is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's actually not good news for Team Turkey. Nope. They have to find a way to get uh, well out of it. Normally, you say just go, go to the, Yeah, they have to just go north. Yeah, yeah they're going to go yeah. north and try to get a bit to the east. They can't go directly east, of course, because... Yeah. Um, they're going to be in a tough squad. Uh, tough position. Oh, sorry, that was the finish team. These colors are confusing, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll get it changed up. I'm sure we can. We, since it's these two specific teams, I'm pretty sure we could we could we could organize that. Potentially, potentially. <laughs> but um, but now, as you were saying, I mean. It, had they just been able to go east, that could have been a thing, but now clearly it's not. It seems to me, though, like, Turkey, they've taken control of the bridge still, but the flank has come around from the side, and Finland clearly has, like, a, a two-front thing, like a pincering going on in the uh, in the Turkish players. Then we've got a vehicle hidden in the... Br two vehicles <laughs> hidden behind a rocket in the brush. These could be game changers, Toby. I'm mm -hmm, thinking mm -hmm. there's going to be a Fast and Furious-style oh, chase yeah. to end this matchup, flying off the hills, on the walls up into the sky, potentially into space. That's actually something I've been missing, like the cavalry <laughs> style of engagement, because sure you can blow up vehicles, but if you send five oh, viewers... He's actually just, doing it! Yeah, if you send... straight through the middle! If you send enough vehicles in, I mean, imagine if you have a ton of people in the open, only covered by smokes, just mm. plow wheels through them yeah. and see how many kills you can rag up. I think that... Was, was this a, a, an... A play, an, uh, an escape play? Yeah, I think it was one of those. I want to go from this side over to the other, and somehow he made it happen too. Mm. Unseen here. Locking down San Eki, and it's 10,000 days that finishes him off. Um, who Who is that with San Keki that Thotis um, should be able to stay alive there as Onsi backs off? Right now, to me, the main issue for the Finnish team, as you can see in the map there as well in the corner, is that they have a front on the eastern side that is not allowing to push forward. Like, they're being contained the really well. Front. This the is eastern, it, man. But yeah, that's, no, no, right? <laughs> they're, they're not allowed to push in. They're not allowed to push in from the Turkish, which means Ooh. that all the Turkish players, they can just focus on the guys in the west, take them down, like, make it two individual fights. So the whole pushing in from each side thing, it's not really working the way that the Finnish would have wanted it to. General Andy, under fire. <laughs> Men! Rally around me! You should Stop have like, oh, around. like in Battlefield 1942 and have the F1, F2 commands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> schnell, 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 schnell. <laughs> this is intense. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's definitely got, it, it, it's definitely got a faster pace than traditional PUBG. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we saw about maybe eight to ten minutes of looting and positioning here. And then when I, the third circle sort of zoned in, everyone just collided and Finland are dropping rapidly. Yes. At this point, this sort of lead surely is quite substantial. The or am I still wrong? Oh, it is, it is, it is, <laughs> it is, for sure. I mean, the idea of the flank was extremely good and now February, well, you're going to need to do something amazing because uh, they have to pull off a hell of a play to cross this bridge here. But uh, as I said before, I mean, the idea of the flank was really good. It was just not executed well enough. I mean, they, they didn't have any pressure and now they're just getting picked off. Ooh, some nice shots there down the bridge. Taking some painkillers to numb the the achy bones and joints and potential bullet wounds in the face. <laughs> I say, take a painkiller to numb the bullet in your chest. That's uh, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. It could be like a really strong painkiller. Oh, yep, yeah, you never know. You that never could know. be um, morphine or something. Yep, I don't yep, know. Yep, yep, yep. Not sure that would do much for, for yeah, bullet same. wounds to the face. Same. But Circles did pop, though, and it seems to me like it's gone actually in the favor of the Finns to a certain extent. Question being, though, they're down by half the numbers. Is it too little today? Because as we said, they were completely contained on the east side, right? So they yeah. got to finish off the west, and now it's a two, like two for one kind of thing. They're twice in numbers. How do you do this as Finland? Oof. Yeah, right now it's just going from bad to worse for yeah. Finland. Missy knocked down, probably going to end up being taken out completely. 10,000 days here, taking his time, you know, following his name. He's been holding the bridge for 10,000 days. Exactly, he's been holding the bridge for 10,000 days. He's a warrior on the front line. Yeah, well, I mean, it makes sense. You want to have at least... I mean, if you can have just one guy... But the circle's going to... 
Yeah, it's, it's moving in already, as you can see. Yeah, the circle's going to pose a bit of a problem here for yeah. him. Nonetheless, he does have support from two other Turkish players. I would imagine... Oh, uh, was it not? I do, Dave. I mean, and with, with Finland I to, having... I need to sort my brain out, <laughs> all right? No worries. You can have all the time to sort. You have the entire day to sort <laughs> out whatever you need. <laughs> I have the day and the night, buddy. <laughs> you have all the long day long yeah. to sort everything you need to sort. But as we talked about, also coming into this, the whole um, Turkish powerhouse moving kind of thing, as soon as they get up in numbers, they just move as one, and they're kind of doing the same thing here. You see all the vehicles coming in as well, and with them being up by well, now a third, like a tr triple numbers... I just don't see how the Finnish players can hold them off. And if Turkey do win this, which it looks like they will, we won't have an interview, unfortunately, with Mithrain. Oh. We will just have to stare at his cardboard. No cardboard out and have a moment of silence. <laughs> and look at this. It feels like, for me, and again, my op opinion is not as educated as yours. It seems to me like Turkey gaining that high ground at the start and sort of positional control yeah. in the circle was paramount to their victory. Um, well, impending victory. I, I, this seems like an impossible task uh, it, at this point for Finland. I mean, they are fighting back as well as they can, but 5 against 27, I am not seeing this going the way of Finland. And I like the idea with the flank. It just did not have enough kind of power to it. And now 2v27, I don't even know where the last two players are. I mean, uh, they, one... Where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? Oh, that. Oh. No, he's dead. Oh, it's Natser. Natser. Natser, how, how do you pull this one off again? Oh, he's, that's. He's going for the glory play here. One versus 27 in the clutch. <laughs> oh. Dodging around the tree, getting humped <laughs> oh, by a frying pan. Maybe. Takes down one. <laughs> Is that the thing now that they all. I know they do it in Greeks. In the Greek players, they always have to kill the last player with a pan. That's the thing they do. Yeah. So they like whenever they see there's just one left, they just yell in the Discord, pan, 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 and they just come charging oh with God. their pans. The cars and come it in. It seems to me like that's... I mean, are, are they shooting? Nope, they're charging in. They are going they are for the pan. They're really committed to the pan play here, the PP. <laughs> and there it is, the first hit. But he does manage to knock oh, yeah. this second player. His nude self dashing down the hill, <laughs> hip spraying. And the thing for him is, does he have enough ammo to hold them all? Now a car comes in as well, and that's going to be it. Oh, you can hold off the guys with a pen, but it cannot hold off a 120 kilometer an hour vehicle. 